As a doctor and a mother, I'm very saddened to the fact that every year in the United States, 5,000 children below the age of 20 are diagnosed with diabetes type 2. When I was in medical school, diabetes type 2 was known as adult onset diabetes that occurs only in the elderly population. But nowadays, we are seeing diabetes in children 9, 10, 14. This is sad because we know that with this disease, there are so many complications. And therefore, if the trend of the increased rise in diabetes type 2 doesn't stop, then our children will be dying younger than their parents. In our show today, you're going to learn about type 2 diabetes, how to prevent the disease and save our children. So don't go away. We'll be right back. My name is Dr. Cooper Dockery and welcome to Get Healthy. Welcome to Get Healthy with Dr. Cooper. Discover the secrets to amazing health and longevity. Learn how lifestyle medicine, the vaccine for chronic diseases, can profoundly influence mind and body. Learn simple solutions such as healthy nutrition, exercise, strong family bonding, stress management, and spiritual renewal will empower you to live a longer, healthier, and more abundant life. And now, here's Dr. Donna Cooper. Type 2 diabetes is taking the lives of our young children, and we must stop this from happening. So to, in our show today, I have Dr. Verley Gordon, a pediatrician who has seen many children with this disease. So he has a lot of information in store for you, Dr. Gordon. Welcome to Get Healthy. Hello, good evening. Nice Hi. to be here. Yes, well, nice having you. I know you have a lot to share. Oh, sure, surely. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Dr. Gordon. Where do you work? Where did you study? Um, originally, I'm from Costa Rica. I went and studied in Montemorelos, Mexico Medical School. And mm -hmm. then from there, I was transported to New York where I did pediatrics. And since I finished in 95, I've wow. been here in the Valley working as a pediatrician. In the Rio Grande in Valley, Rio South Grande Valley. Texas, right? Exactly. That's the home for obesity. Exactly. <laughs> and therefore, that's the home for diabetes. Yeah. So, doctor, do you see children with diabetes? Yes, we do see. In, in general, I wouldn't say that our practice has a large amount of mm -hmm. them, but we have seen it um, present. Now, from the time when I started practicing until now, the range has been increasing. And not only to the point of diabetes, but also the things that preset for the development of diabetes. That's right. When you say things that preset, what do you mean? Okay, you, you have um, tr um, problems with their um, lipids. You have mm -hmm. um, not necessarily the range of diabetes in terms of their blood sugar, but what you call pre-diabetes. Pre mm -hmm. And also some of the other signs like the acantosis and things like that. Right, which we're going to talk about later in the exactly. show. You know, I find it very interesting because even though I'm an internal medicine doctor, I see adults. Yeah. I have a few patients who are young, younger than 18, with diabetes type 2. Yeah. So this is the disease I want to talk about, type 2 diabetes, because type 1 has a different etiology, exactly. right? Yes. But type 2 is the one that we know that we can actually prevent with lifestyle changes. Yes. So doctor, when you see these patients in your office, what do you usually do? How, how do you approach this disease? Okay, um, not so much from the standpoint of only treating, but as you mentioned before, the main focus would be in terms of prevention. Um, with the advance of medicine, a lot of things have been geared towards genetics and even sometimes as the cause of this, there might someone try to slip in the possibility of genetics being related to this. But one of the things that is very interesting is that for the past maybe like about 30 years, the rate of um, obesity, inactivity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, fast food, lots of sugar right. in the diet, mm -hmm. different things like that. And directly related with this, we have been seeing an increase in obesity and 
as Diabetes. a result of this diabetes. Right. You know, I find it very difficult. I have three children. How many do you have? Two. Two, that's right. <laughs> and it's so difficult to um, come to them on healthy eating, especially when they're at college or yeah. outside of the, the home. home. So I think this is one of the reasons. You know, statistics ha have shown that in 1970, for example, People consumed about 2,000 calories a day, mm -hmm. but now we're consuming close to 3,000 calories a yeah. day. And 500 calories a day extra will cause the weight gain. Yes. So that's one of the reasons it's what we're eating and how much we're eating yeah. that's causing this terrible disease. And even while, we are, while I am speaking sometimes with the patient and trying to encourage mm -hmm. um, uh, change in terms of their lifestyle, the thing is this that I have noticed. Kids tend to spend less time on the outside. Absolutely. One of their complaints is related to the heat. Mm -hmm. But we have always had heat. What is the problem? It is not so much the heat outside, no. but the comfort that you have inside that's air right. condition playstation tv all phones and all of the all of the screens right. that make them be more sedentary while they are doing this the refrigerator is not too far away so that is a combination that is terrible that's right you know <laughs> <laughs> studies have shown that the children are spending more than 11 hours a day in front of a screen yes it could be their yeah. iphone their iPad, mm -hmm. the television, the computer. Yeah. And as you say, they're not moving. And as we know, that exercise also will, can prevent the onset of diabetes. Yeah. Now, maybe in the audience, somebody might think, in, or viewers, what is diabetes? Now, why don't we walk over there and talk a little bit about what diabetes is and some of the symptoms that will help us to recognize Identify that, it early. Identify that there is something happening. Let's Surely. walk over here. Come with me, Doc. So usually when we talk about diabetes, we talk about a small organ in the body or a gland. So we have, ouch, let's look at this right here. So we talk about insulin. Yes. You know, insulin is produced by the pancreas. Like now, pancreas. where is the pancreas? Now, let me turn this over, see if we can do some focusing right here. This is the liver. I'm going to take that out. And then this is the stomach. stomach. Now behind the stomach, we have this tadpole looking organ. Mm -hmm. and that is the pancreas. And for us not to have diabetes, then we need to have enough insulin mm -hmm. or the insulin must be functional, functional. right? In order for the insulin to take the sugar out of the, the bloodstream stream. into the cells. Now, are there any signs that we can recognize in the patients that they probably are predisposed to diabetes? I think we have two pictures there showing the neck okay. and the, the axillary area yeah. where there is that um, dark pigmentation that mm -hmm. we call acanthosis nigricans. Right. Yeah. Tell us a little bit, what do you do when you have patients that have this? Many people confuse or might confuse the presence of acanthosis nigricans with diabetes itself, which is not diabetes. This is just like right. a sign mm -hmm. or an alert right. that the patient is at an increased risk for the development of diabetes. What, this basically, what is basically happening is that the body is producing a high level of insulin right. to be able to try to regulate and control mm -hmm. the blood sugar. That is one of the amazing things of our body. No matter the stress or problem that right. we put it through, it always try to find it, its way to go through. Your doctor delivered some bad news, but the good news is Dr. Cooper's book, Get Healthy for Life, can save your life. Order today at drdonnacooper.com or call 1-844-343-8935. sure our viewers are probably wondering what is diabetes what's the numbers we're going to look at we have another picture there because when we talk about diabetes we're talking about high blood sugar, sugar. right so what when do you send your patients out to the endocrinologist what's the number you're looking for okay the normal range for the blood sugar should be between 60 to 100 
we categorize it as so diabetes when, once you have 126 mm -hmm. or above. Right. So if you are between 125 and 125 is what you call pre-diabetes. Mm -hmm. You don't have the disease as yet, but you are at a higher risk of developing Diabetes. Yeah, diabetes. Let's look at these numbers. So we're talking about the fasting blood sugar. So yes. when they get up in the morning, it should be less than 100. 100. If they're in this range from 101 to 125, then they're pre-diabetic. Pre that means they are at risk for developing diabetes. Exactly. Now, if they're over 126, more than one or two um, blood tests, Test. then you're diagnosed mm. with diabetes. Exactly. All right. Now, many people probably heard the word hemoglobin A1C. Yes. Right? So the normal level should be less than 5.7. But if the child is between 5.7, 6.4, then that child is at risk for diabetes. Exactly. Right? So the sugar is going to be a little high. And what I'd like people to understand is that pre-diabetes will have the same complications as exactly. diabetes. Because it is still above the normal mm -hmm. range that the body needs to keep it at. Right, and the high sugar will damage the cells. Exactly. And therefore, we must treat this as if they were diabetic, meaning therefore we start making lifestyle yes. changes. All right, doctor, I know you have a lot to say, but we have Adrienne on the street with the people, and I think he has some questions for us. Let's go to Adrian. Okay. Hi, Dr. Cooper. Today I'm here with... Uh, Pastor Julian Henry Garza. And today he has a very important question for you. Well, uh, if I am a diabetic person or, or uh, I have diabetes in my life, does it mean that my children are going to be diabetic too, Dr. Cooper? All right. That's a, that's a great question. Yeah. Dr. Gordon, you want to take that one? Okay. <laughs> Since it has to do with the kids, yes, surely. Exactly. When it goes to him, then it's you'll take me. that one. <laughs> No, um, I have an example that I would like to use for that. When you have a family member, well, the tendency of the family is to have a certain illness. With this, you could consider it to be like a loaded gun. Mm -hmm. You have the gun, you have the bullet in it, mm -hmm. but it is not going to do any damage except you pull the, the trigger. trigger. Mm -hmm. One of the problems that you have with what this pastor was mentioning is that you have a high incidence in the family mainly because the lifestyle that the parents have, they tend to pass, the same pass thing it over on. to their children. So the way how they eat, the exercise mm -hmm. level, things mm -hmm. like that, it tends to pass. And actually, there are studies that show that when you have a child that is born in a certain family and then is adopted in another family that has a different lifestyle, right. mm -hmm. they tend to adapt. Right to whatever circumstances you have in this other family compared to the biological family. So, so you, have, you, you could have sort of like a predisposition, but the main thing is the lifestyle that you um, right. work with. The way you live, what you exactly. eat, the behavior. Exactly. You stole my line. I always say oh, okay. that <laughs> genetics is a loaded gun. Yeah. But lifestyle pulls the trigger. Exactly. So our viewers need to understand the most important thing to do with these chronic lifestyle diseases is to adopt healthier lifestyle. All right, Adrian, let's see if Adrian has any more questions for us. I think he has a couple more. Dr. Cooper, I'm here with Julian Garza. Amen. He has a very important question for you. How, what can I do to keep my children from receiving diabetes? All right. Okay. Now, doctor, you're the pediatrician. Okay. What should the parents do to protect their kids from this disease? The best way you can help someone is being a good example. So number one, I would ask parents to be a good example to their kids. So they need to live a healthier lifestyle. As the example that we just, just presented. Mm -hmm. If they have a healthy lifestyle, most likely it is not, nothing in life is a hundred percent guarantee, mm -hmm. but most likely that they'll adapt this. We have a lot of uh, facilities in the environment where we live in these times for activities, sports, recreational mm -hmm. things. Try to be an, more an, of an outdoor person and then you can pull your kids out so then they might be able to go out and be more active. active. So you're saying uh, healthy nutrition exactly. and being active is important to prevent diabetes in the young people as well as in the adult. 
Yes. We have much more to say on diabetes in the children. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you tired of being sick and tired and ready to take back control of your health? If so, Dr. Donna Cooper and her team are ready to help. To order her books or the DVD series, Get Healthy for Life and 14 Days to Amazing Health, call 1-844-343-8935 or go to drdonnacooper.com today. And we're back. Dr. Gordon, yes. I am hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah, actually, it's time to eat. Yeah, but not this, <laughs> not right? This, not this. <laughs> we have been talking about type 2 diabetes yep. and how nutrition will influence the disease. Yeah. Here on the table, we have a variety of food, right? Exactly. And I'm sure that one young child could sit at the table at one meal and just consume all of this easily yeah. and they could even have refill. more exactly yeah. what's the danger here we're going to look at each of these items and we're going to talk about the danger so we'll start right here so they go and they purchase a burger, burger. with some cheese and this alone has almost 400 calories almost, yes. okay then we add on the fries and this is over 400 over 400. So there we have 800. Now, what's the danger right here, doctor, as well, we continue to go up? What? Well, depending on the size of the, of the person, the amount of calories that they, need, that they need. You as an adult physician, you usually have a standard. We go more by weight. So some kids might need, let's say, 700, mm -hmm. 1,000, 12, 1,500. But if you have 800 calories and you didn't include all of all this as yet, so you are mostly pretty much had the, the, the half of the meal for the day just with these That's two right. products. That's right. So we have a lot of oil here. Lots. Oil, this is high in calories. And not only that, we discussed the risk with obesity and fat causing exactly. type 2 diabetes. A lot of people tend to focus on the sugar, mm -hmm. but the fat is very important in the development of diabetes. That's right. So I hope everyone is listening to that. It's not all the sugar, but really it's the fat that's blocking that insulin from getting into the cells to, to lower the, the sugar. Yes. So the fat here is dangerous. Yep. The white bread is dangerous. It has less fiber. Mm -hmm. So consuming this, the sugar will rise. And then we continue down the line. The ketchup has some calories too. Yes. That is going to be added here. And then the chips, just a pack of chips that anyone could easily consume. Yeah. And it has almost 500 calories. Yes. So there we go. We add this to this to that. About 1,300 more. 1,300. And a bar. A snack bar, that is something that I'm sure they'll have. That's over 200 calories right there. That is to just let the food settle, settle down. down. <laughs> that is 250 <laughs> calories almost already exactly. there. Exactly. And they don't have the soda. They haven't even yeah. had the soda yet. In that soda, we have 300 calories 300. and a lot of sugar there. Yep. 58 grams. And what would be a food without dessert? Oh, Doc, no, you're <laughs> right. But you know, before going to the dessert, they're going to refill that. Yes. So they'll take a large and they're going to go and refill. Really? So three and three is 600 calories. There you there. go. And then look at the dessert. That's a very small one. How much yeah. calorie do we have there in that shake? 680 and mostly 700 calories. Right. So this entire meal is going to be about 2,500 calories. Exactly. And that is just lunch. We have added the breakfast or supper, or yeah. supper. Or this, and many times you have snacks in between right. meals. Right. So to prevent diabetes, we have to make sure that we don't overconsume calories, yep. right? And that is the problem with all this processed food. Yes. This processed foods here are high in calories and low in nutrients, nutrients. all right? So this here, consuming like this, will increase the risk for, for diabetes. diabetes.
Dr. Donna Cooper invites you to connect with us. Like us and share our social media networks. You can watch repeat programs of our shows anytime on Vimeo. Find us on our website at drdonnacooper.com. Let's go over here and look at some positive counsel that we can share. Exactly. All right. So we just discussed the food, the problem causing obesity and diabetes. What are the good counsels? I think we have five healthy habits that we want everyone to follow. And this has to do with change of lifestyle, the appropriate way in which each one of us should be eating so that we can prevent this problem that we have been speaking about. Right. You notice we haven't discussed treatment. No. Because really we want to prevent the disease. Exactly. And as we discuss, it's lifestyle prevention. So the first healthy habit will be on Nutrition, am Nutrition, I right? Nutrition, exactly. Because that's the number one problem causing the disease. So it has to be. And what would you advise us to, um, to consume? So look at this. Choose a variety of healthy meals. Meat. What are healthy meals, doctor? Things like, for example, fruit, vegetable, nuts. Things that are going to have all of the nutrients, but not the extra calories that is going to help us to put on the weight that we really don't need. That's right. So a diet that is based in plant. Let's go to number two. So, and now, not too much. You must be moderate in the amount you consume. Remember, we just looked at the amount of calories mm -hmm causing the diabetes so moderation is important so even if you have a good thing yeah. if you eat too much of it exactly it becomes unhealthy harmful that's right so one has to look in portion size portion if they're going to have rice don't have three cups of rice but have probably two third cups of have, rice. have a balance in everything a that you balance do. in everything that you do all right next number three low fat diet as all we mentioned when we were over at the table, fat is one of the main contributors to the development of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So once we have that in check, then we'll have diabetes also in check. Right. So no fried food. Try not to, to fry your meals. Right. And, and you have things that have natural oils, like for example, avocado, mm -hmm. nuts, different things like that. Have the nut because mm -hmm. our body needs all of those things. Right. But the thing is not to have it in excess mm -hmm. nor the bad type of fat right either. the bad fats like the meats yes right so we need to be very careful with the red meats yes all right all right let's look at number four, four. all right this is very important you should eat regularly during the day meaning therefore eat the breakfast eat the, the lunch yep. and a small dinner no in between and don't skip the meal okay one of the things that I learned with time, our body is like a machinery. Mm -hmm. And every machine runs the risk of burning out. That's right. So then if you're eating constantly, then your stomach is not resting, resting appropriately. That's why you have dyspepsia, ulcer stomach, the reflux, reflux, all of these the things. Bloating. We need to give our system time to rest. You eat, let it digest, and have a little rest instead of snacking too much in the Right. Food. And our last healthy habit what's that gonna be doctor number five stay active exercise it is not only the food because we, there we speak about the stomach but our muscles that stimulate circulation circulation helps to clean out rejuvenate the tissues so that the food that we consume might be able to reach appropriately and that way we strengthen our body in a better way. Good. And when we talk about diabetes, exercise is so important because as one exercises, one needs the glucose for yes. the energy. So as you exercise, the cells are going to use the glucose. We're going to lower our blood sugar. Yes. Not only that, it is believed also that exercise will increase the insulin ability to work harder exactly. 
so the gonna, resistance that we're speaking about will be that decreased. will be decreased through the same exercise right so doctor i thank you so much for being on the oh, show thank you for inviting <laughs> <laughs> and i hope you have learned a lot about diabetes and the young people and how to prevent it we have much more for you so don't go away we'll be right back are you tired of being sick and tired and ready to take back control of your health if so dr donna cooper and her team are ready to help to order her books or the dvd series get healthy for life and 14 Days to Amazing Health, call 1-844-343-8935 or go to drdonnacooper.com today. Welcome back. I hope you have learned a lot from our show today. Diabetes is now rising in children and if we're not careful, our children's lifespan will be shorter than ours. I am a physician, I have three children. So the topic of keeping our children alive and healthy is very dear to my heart. And I do hope you've learned that diabetes type two is a lifestyle disease. You can prevent your children from getting this disease. I have written three books and in this book, 14 Days to Amazing Health, I have documented ways in which you can use the information here to live a healthy lifestyle and to share with your family so your family can also live healthier. So don't lose hope. There are lots of information out there that will help you keep your children healthy. I know it's difficult because if the children leave home, they go to college and they start eating differently. However, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. You know, my daughter told me once that, mom, we know the right thing. And even if we were to temporarily depart we will come right back so parents there is hope you must instill in your children the importance to stay physically healthy mentally healthy and spiritually healthy if you want more information on diabetes or any other disease then you can find me at my website cooperwellnesscenter.com you can also find us on facebook and youtube for more information, it will be right there for you and my number should be coming up on the screen. So until next week, may God guide you and your family. Much blessing. This broadcast was sponsored by Cooper Wellness Center and Faithful Path International Ministries. For more information on how to become a patient or a sponsor, please contact us at one 844 343-8935 or visit our website www.cooperwellnesscenter.com